Hey guys, this is Christy Lewis from Dusty Hipsky in Space. Tonight I am here with a very exciting video specifically for Enneagram 9s or people who want to get to know Enneagram 9s a little bit better. Now, I'm not an expert on Enneagram 9s, I just am an Enneagram 9. So I'm going to share some books that I really love, that helped me grow, that helped me with certain specific things that I will list off for you. And this is a collaborative video. I got some of my Enneagram 9 reader friends together, and we're all going to give you some recommendations. So let's just jump into it. So 9 is known as the easygoing, self-effacing type receptive, reassuring, agreeable, and complacent. My reasons for recommending a lot of these books are very specific and a lot of them are very spiritual and that is because Enneagram 9s tend to really need that spiritual peace with the world around them. They need that spiritual rest and it's just a part of us that just thirsts for harmony and unity. So a lot of my books have to do with that kind of thing, but some of the other nines on this list are actually different Myers-Briggs types than I am. I'm an ISFJ. So hopefully we'll all have a little bit different uh, recommendations for you. Everybody is going to be recommending one to three books for you guys, except for me. I'm going to do a little bit more because my video. Number one thing about nines that I first came up with when coming up with for this list was that nines really enjoy a plurality of perspectives. We are not just cool usually with just hearing one side or, you know, whoever's loudest gets heard. That's generally not how we feel about things. We want to see multiple perspectives and it's almost more natural, I think, to nines to just look at various perspectives, which in my case, manifests as indecisiveness. I can't make up my mind on a lot of big issues or like I just decide it's not that important and I end up detaching, which isn't great. It's good to be informed on things, even though it's exhausting to be informed on things. I'm gonna recommend two books to you. Um, they are biographies that I mostly listened to. Some of them I read physically, but yeah. So I highly recommend Washington by Ron Chernow, which if you've hung around my channel for a second, you've probably heard me talk about Washington. That's because it was like an epic in my life. It really changed my life to read about the early American period, how Washington felt about slavery and all, all of these things that our founding fathers had to deal with. And I just had a really hard time envisioning how some of that happened. So I read Washington. It was really informative on a lot of those issues. And I really found myself admiring Washington in a lot of ways, with the exception of his blind spot. He was a slave owner. And so the author of this biography just goes in so depth into Washington's character and that blind spot for him and why the founding fathers did not end up outlawing slavery right off the bat. And it's very interesting. I actually read this and then I watched the musical 1776, which was recommended to me by Alan from Library of Alexandria. And I read these books, this one and the next one with Ramsey from Rajathan. So check out the channels for sure. It was just a fantastic experience to start off my year with. So the second book was John Adams by David McCullough. It did the same thing for me that Washington did. Although mostly it just gave me a founding father that I could fully root for and cheer for. He didn't just say he was against slavery. He literally never owned a slave. He fought for that. He tried to convince everybody around him to make slavery obsolete, to make slavery not an American institution after the founding of the nation. And unfortunately, people didn't listen to him, but I was able to root for him fully. I really loved John Adams after reading this biography. I found the Washington biography, I think a little bit more gripping because it followed Washington to the front of the Revolutionary War. And I just found that very interesting and exciting. I really preferred his writing style, Ron now, but I know a lot of people who absolutely loved David McCullough's writing style as well. So Highly recommend those two. You can listen to them on audiobook. It was very interesting and chill for me to just listen to them while I'm just going about my daily duties. I'm a big audiobook listener. I just get kind of fidgety if I sit for too long a lot of times. The next one is if you are feeling kind of like anxious, like you really want some unity and peace. I think nines, we have a tendency to kind of want to really step back and disconnect sometimes if we're feeling stressed out or if we've been working really hard 
And I think that's healthy to do to some degree, but also it's very important to stay attached. And that's part of an Enneagram 9's growth. For me, uh, I really would recommend The Simple Faith of Mr. Rogers. I just listened to this one on audiobook. It was fabulous. It really restored my faith in not humanity, but in our ability to be kind to one another, to have unity with each other. It just gave me so much peace and joy to listen to Mr. Rogers from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood was an Enneagram 9, and he was just such a lovely person. I didn't actually watch him, as, a, as far as I recall growing up, but I know a lot of people did. So if you enjoyed Mr. Rogers, I recommend this even more, because I enjoyed it without even having really watched him, but he just seems like such a lovely, lovely person. And I found it incredibly relaxing to listen to this audiobook while I was walking or doing chores or whatever. It was a restorative for me. And the other recommendation I would have for this same subject of chilling without detaching is the Psalms because when I am stressed, I've been memorizing the Psalms with my friend Rainy and having them at hand when I'm stressed in my head is just, it's such a comfort to me. And I can be like praising God while also being stressed and, and trying to kind of pull myself out of that mindset and they really help. They're very calming. They echo my feelings. They say it's okay to talk to God about these things and then I feel better about them. So highly recommend the Psalms. And finally, if you ever have really felt like you need something to light a fire under your tail, which is I think something that Enneagram nines will vibe with, <laughs> or standing up for your convictions. I know nines sometimes are not willing to stand up and state their convictions, but that's really important to add to the conversation, especially because nines feel convictions very deeply and on a spiritual level, and it's just important to add that to a conversation. You don't necessarily have to be right, but it's just important for you to share those things and let it be known what you believe is right. I think that if anything really gets me to do that, it's the New Testament, reading the New Testament. Like I said, this is a very spiritual kind of list because, yeah, I just think that a lot of nines can relate to that. So the New Testament, highly recommend. All of these things just make me get up and remember to focus on other people rather than just kind of retreating into myself and my own problems. It really helps me look outward and care more about other people when I just feel like not. <laughs> Highly recommend. So, and I also have the list from Monique, the Ginger Librarian. She is also a nine and she offered a few books. So there's the Enneagram Type 9, The Peaceful Mediator by Beth McCord, The Peacemaker Growing as an Enneagram 9 by Elizabeth Bennett, and The Gospel for Peacemakers, a 40-day devotional for supportive, easygoing mediators, Enneagram 9 by Tyler Zach. I hope that you guys enjoyed my list and I hope that you will enjoy the list that my friends offer you. So if you didn't really like my recommendations, there's more coming. Check them out. Hey there guys. Obviously I have one more book to add here that somebody just sent as a text and that somebody would be Charmaine from Traveling Through Books on Instagram. She's also an Enneagram 9. We've had many conversations on this subject <laughs> and she recommends the book Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed and she recommends this book because the character Amira is also an Enneagram 9 and Charmaine says she's never related more to a character so that's a pretty high recommendation. So Hope you enjoy. Hey y'all, it's Kay from the Literary Apothecary and I am here to give some recommendations for my fellow Enneagram 9 folks. Um, I love being an Enneagram 9. It, I, when I read the description, I was like, that is me to a T and I'm proud to be an Enneagram 9 because we're the peacekeepers and we're all about keeping peace and making everyone happy and making sure that everyone is happy and taken care of. So um, these are some of my favorite books and I think they're great for Enneagram 9s for various reasons, which I'll go to really quickly. First is the classic The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. And this is great for an Enneagram 9 because our narrator, Nick Carraway, is a classic Enneagram 9. And it's told from his point of view. And I think it's just, it's great to see a story from our point of view. We don't get that often. Um... Next, the next recommendation I have is The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgins Burnett. And this is one of my favorite books ever since I was a kid. I've loved this book. And I say this is great for a 
Enneagram 9 because our main character basically goes from being a spoiled, selfish brat to a classic Enneagram 9 that's taking care of people and she finds this cousin that's kind of hiding away and he can't take care of himself and so she takes on the responsibility of taking care of him and it kind of turns her into that classic Enneagram 9. My third recommendation is The Stranger by Albert Camus and this is a completely different recommendation but I think it's great because in The Stranger we get a, a classic Enneagram 9 that's gone wrong essentially when our main character and the Enneagram 9 character has just had enough and things have gone completely off rails and it shows you kind of what not to do as an Enneagram 9. And then my last recommendation for y'all today is one of my favorite books ever. That's The Book Thief by Marcus Zusick. And this is a book about Enneagram 9s, a book about taking care of each other and surviving World War II. And we have so many different caretakers and peacekeepers and Enneagram 9s in this book that it's just a book about Enneagram 9s, it feels like. And I just love it. And it's just seeing how these people survive World War II and the Nazis and seeing all the different levels of caretaking that go on in this book is just so heartwarming and inspiring and I love it. So those are my four recommendations for books that Enneagram 9 folks can read. I hope you all loved this and thank you Chrissy for asking me to be part of this. I love you all to the moon and back. Bye. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Christy. I am freaking excited about this video because one, I am an Enneagram 9 and two, I love to read. And so it is very fascinating to see what other Enneagram 9s would be recommended based on their personality. So when I think Enneagram 9, I think someone who really doesn't like anger, I think of myself who doesn't like fight scenes and I've chatted with a few other people with Enneagram 9 and they don't really like fight scenes that much either. I think we just, we're averse to the emotion of anger in general, not that we can't read it, but we prefer to focus on other emotions. Um, and I myself really like an emotional roller coaster. Um, and, and the book that I have chosen definitely provides the emotions, but without the fighting, there is no fighting. There's no aggression really. I mean, maybe like you could consider some of it that way, but I mean, what book doesn't except for like romance novels? Anyway, I digress. One of the main things that I think about when I think Enneagram 9 is our growth path. And our growth path is that of right action. In other words, taking action when we don't agree with something. Because we can be so conflict averse, we can avoid putting ourselves out there when we really should. And so the book that I've chosen today is an example of a character who puts herself out there in a nonviolent way, standing up for what she believes in and what she thinks is right. And that book that I recommend for Enneagram 9s is Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler is one of my favorite books of all time, but I think that it's especially good for an Enneagram 9 because the main character, Lauren, has this thing called hyperempathy. She cannot attack another person because if she were to attack another person, she herself would feel equal amounts of pain in however she pained the other person. So she's completely nonviolent in her way of addressing the world. And I think that as an Enneagram 9, we can absolutely relate to that. And she ends up creating her own religion, which is about the idea of change. And the story is just really beautiful. It's about her traversing this weird post-apocalyptic future dystopian story. And it's just great. If you like stories about realistic people in a setting that is scarily, uh, scarily accurate to what our future may look like, then this book is for you. It is a great story for anyone, but I especially recommend it for Enneagram 9 people. Thanks again, Christy, for having me. My name is Michelle. My channel is Heart of Michi, and I hope you all have a beautiful, amazing, fantastic day. Bye-bye.